Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show, we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today it's back to Northern Realm. So if you watch the uh, Gwent Open from uh, two weeks ago, I think it is right now, uh, you might have noticed a few decks that actually use the mobilization ability combined with Revenants and the Redanian Archers in a very effective way. And it kind of inspired me to combine the Archers with something like say siege and that's exactly what we're going to check out today we're going to check out the siege archers deck and as you can see this is the deck composition right here it's going to do exactly what you think it will do there's going to be a lot of damage pings in this deck and we possibly can overwhelm our enemies with just the sheer force of our revenants or archers and of course the siege engines that will be flying all over the place. Let's start as we usually do from the bottom to the top um, but of course siege is very important here so it's gonna kind of guide how this deck is structured. So there's gonna be a few siege engines that might not make too much sense on their own but together with the siege um, scenario that's going to be very very powerful indeed. So let's start at the bottom. We have the Siege Ladder so that can move an allied unit to another row which is handy because a lot of our units in this deck are actually row locked so lose their ability once they are moved to another row. So allowing us to move that unit back to the ranged row in most cases that's going to be very very powerful indeed in certain situations. Then we have the Cat Wenny Knights. Um, very peculiar unit uh, Units that actually get a three point boost when they get played from the deck. If you actually play them with uh, True Amphibious Assault, you actually get a 12 point unit in one go. So that's a very important finisher that can sometimes help you end round one with just a single card if you uh, are lacking in points. And then of course we have the Redanian Archers, the uh, crux of this deck. Um, if you put them on the ranged row you get one charge of their ability at the end of every one of your turn as long as you have armor and with that ability you can damage an enemy unit by one which you can do immediately because he also has zeal. Um, to complement that we also have the Kedweni Revenant um, which can damage a unit by one on order just once, but if you kill something with that ability, you spawn another Kedwani Revenant on the same row, which can actually spiral out of control immediately. And the Redanian Archers are mainly used to um, lower the health of opposing units to get one to one power, and then of course, use the Kedwani Revenant to take that out immediately. I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit because since these are the two bronze units that we're gonna be using the most there's also a lot of ways in this deck to make more than just the two you see here. So for example we have reinforcements over here which allows you to just spawn and play a base copy of a bronze unit that is already on your side of the field so you do need to have it on your side of the field. Forbidden magic allows you to deal two damage to an enemy unit and if you kill it with that two damage you also spawn a random uh, well a get when revenant on a random row um, then we have necromancy able to pull a bronze unit back from the graveyard so that's another one that you can create then of course we have ways of pulling them out of the deck with either john natalis into amphibious assault or amphibious assault directly and then last but not least we also have queen adalia allowing you to spawn and play a base copy of a bronze northern realms unit in your hand and give it a shield so that's a very strong opening move that just gives you a little bit of a head start and protects those archers specifically because even because there's bronze units, these uh, archers and revenants are really vulnerable to removal. So you want to protect them as much as possible. Talking about protection, we also have the mantlet here. So a neutral siege engine, again, um, factoring in that we need to have siege engines to make siege work. Um, but as long as it's on the melee row, it will give a, you, every unit you play one armor. And if the mantlet itself also has armor, it actually gives two armor to every unit you play. Especially powerful for the Redanian archers, because of course they keep getting charges as long as they have armor. So the more armor they have, the more difficult it will be for your opponent to remove that armor and stop that ability from going. Then we have a few basic siege engines, so the battering ram can deal damage to three damage to the highest unit on your enemy's field. Reinforced trebuchets can um, damage a random enemy unit on the ranged row by one at the end of every one of your turns, which can stack up nicely with the siege uh, scenario as well. And then the reinforced ballista just allows you to 
uh, also gain more charges on um, just simple damage ping. So you also just damage a unit by one. But Reinforced Ballista also allow you to damage your own units. Should it be necessary, it is actually possible. Um, then we have Boiling Oil, just a simple five bit of damage. And then we have Sabrina Glavesic. Uh, it's very, very strong combined with either the Revenants or the Archers. So you can play her on the opposite uh, side of the field. And when you kill her uh, over there, she actually takes out um, the entire row with two damage on each unit on that row. So that's very, very strong. John Natales, again, we talked about that. We can pull a Warfare card from your deck with that, usually um, reserved for Amphibious Assault. Visigota, a very strong charge-based engine unit that just gains a charge whenever any player plays a card. And with every charge, he can actually boost a unit on your side of the field. Well, actually, on any side of the field by one. Um, and then Dandelion. Dandelion is actually really strong combined with archers. I rarely see it in one of these decks. But if you have two archers already on the field, and that happens quite often, if you play Dandelion, you automatically get eight points. Because Dandelion himself has six power, and each of the Redanian archers on your side of the field will gain a charge at the end of your turn, giving them a boost each. Because that's exactly what Dandelion does. He boosts every unit that gains a charge by the amount of charges they gained. So again, also combined with Visigota, very, very strong engine loop if you can pull it off. And to protect that engine loop, of course, we have Donomir of Troil who has uh, the defender status and a shield, which is very, very powerful. Can be removed by Karate Heatwave, and that's exactly the reason why we actually want to include it as well, because we want to take care of defenders so we can keep damage pinging whatever we want, because we want to hit those low power units. And then last but not least, of course, Siege itself uh, progresses whenever you uh, play a Siege engine. I think if I call counted this correctly i think we have seven siege engines in the deck with the possibility to make more with necromancy and reinforcements so that seems pretty okay to me and even queen adalia by the way if you need to um first thing that it does is spawn a reinforced trebuchet so again that on the ranged row then the battering ram and then the final chapter is bombardment giving you a lot of damage potential on the field i have ended matches with this deck that my opponent does have just has nothing on the field anymore. It's just uh, an empty field. So uh, just to demonstrate that a bit, we'll be heading straight into an example match. But first things first, uh, we also have the stratagem, of course, I need to talk about that. So the engineering solution gives you a four point boost and a shield, again, very important to protect those engines. And then mobilization allows you to spawn a base copy of a bronze allied soldier on its row and boost it by three. So, very important to note, so mobilization spawns a copy of the unit on the same row that the, of the unit that you selected. So for archers that's not a problem, they should already be on the ranged row, um, but very important to note. And then of course it needs to be a soldier, so your only targets in this deck are going to be the archers or the revenants. Which is obvious, because that's the only thing that we're, uh, what we're here for, so uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem, but something to keep in mind. Let's head into that example match. So my win rate so far with this deck has been 8 wins versus 2 losses and I usually you lose against um, very aggressive decks so this shouldn't be too much of a problem, it's a monster deck so I should be fine, let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and look at what we start with. We don't start with a, an archer so that's going to be interesting but let's get, oh that was not what I wanted to, there we go we have another archer. Might as well take out another one of the trebuchets, although the trebuchets are important. So might as well try that. Let's just get rid of the second re reinforced trebuchet and we get, okay, sadly, the Redanian Knight. Uh, the Ketwenny Knight, what am I saying? The Ketwenny Knight, so there we go, okay. Um, I think the first thing that you should start with, if you can, is of course playing that Mantlet. Because the Mantlet allows you to give your units a bit more of protection. Um, we could get hit with Predatory Dive against monsters, so we need to be careful about that. So don't play anything that you really want to play. And now we get Karantir on a one power, so that's going to be the beast probably. Oh no! Okay. So monsters these days really start out very, very aggressively. Uh, so I'm going to let that play out. Because there's not much we can do against that. So let's just put that reinforced trebuchet over there. 
and see where this leads us. Uh, we might get hit by another Miruna, because they really go for the aggressiveness in those decks. Um, and we get, of course, Cyclops. It's a very aggressive deck this time. So yeah, against excessive removal, this deck has its weaknesses, because of course you need to set up those engines to keep going. Um, but let's start out with the archers first. And then let's hit one, well, just the uh, the Karanti on the back row and see where this leads us. There's not much we can do against just overwhelming stuff like this. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're overreaching right now as well, because uh, we have plenty of ways to, uh, there we go, we have the second Maruna. And I'm just wondering, so that's 30 points. We have three more cards, so if we can hit, hmm, I don't think I will be able to. Um, there's a lot of points on the field right now. And I feel like I'm going to be overreaching, but of course, if I don't, they're going to push. I don't want to get pushed into a, a short last round with this deck because you can't really get out of it. So let's just get the Kedwani Revenant over there. And if our opponent passes, we actually have two cards to actually get to um, bridge that gap, but we don't. Okay, so that's not too bad. We get a boost on the Redanian Archer. That is interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to pass now. Yeah, let's just pass. I'm going to show you in a minute what you should do in a situation like this. So I'm hoping I'm going to get Siege now. Because Siege would allow me to be very, very aggressive. Um, and just push to get that second round. And maybe even giving us card advantage if our opponent over has overplayed. Which I think they did. Um, okay, so let's get rid of that Knights. It's not really what I wanted to see. We haven't seen Siege, but we do have reinforcements. So I'm gonna get rid of the Siege ladder and we get... Ooh, that's actually pretty bad. Yeah. Um, that is actually pretty bad. Okay, first things first, let's Karate Heatwave the Haunt. Because that needs to go. And then we're going to have to be really careful because the problem right now is Adalia in our hands is bricked. So we don't have any bronze units at all in our hand. It's all golden cards. Which means that we're going to have to be careful. Okay, so that's fine. That's, that's, actually, that's actually really good because we couldn't do anything else. So let's just get Amphibious Assault and I'll show you the Knight combo. So if we play the Kedwani Knight, we get a 5-point boost from Amphibious Assault and then a 3-point boost because it's pulled from the deck. So that's a 12-point unit. And there we go. So that's the second round for us. And now we're going to have to be careful. So because of the fact there's so many ways for monsters to take out the only unit you have on the field, um, it's going to be very important to play this correctly. So um, I still have the boiling oil that I'm now going to toss. Yeah, I'm going to toss it. That's another revenant. I would love another archer. Do I have enough ways to pull? Because I need to be careful. If I now pull siege, I need to be able to... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be able to. So, yeah, there we go. Let's test each. Wow. This is basically a perfect hand. Um, the only problem we have at the moment is that I don't have um, an archer in hand. But that's not too much of a problem. I'm just going to play Adalia first because that gives us two units. There we go. So let's put a second Revenant on there. And now we're going to have to play this uh, the right way. Because I need to be careful. I need to be able to play enough siege engines, which I have none of in my hand right now, to um, finish up uh, siege itself. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So first things first. I'm going to play um, Donimir on the ranged row. 
He could get Karate Heatwaved, of course, but then we know that Karate is out of the way. Um, we need to protect that range throw. So Donami is, in this deck, going to always go on the range throw because you need to protect... There we go, Karate Heatwave. Uh, we need to protect Fizogota. We need to protect the Archers. Okay. So next up... Um, I could just resurrect an Archer or pull it with the... Hmm... Let's see, this is playing, right? Yeah, okay, so that shouldn't be a, too much of a problem. I'm gonna play my second archer from uh, Amphibious Assault. So that gives us an eight point archer. And then we play another one with mobilization. So that's how you wanna use mobilization, just use it directly. And now we can just take out one of the Indrega larva and get our second revenant on the field as well. There we go. And that's how this deck is going to evolve, this, this, well, this board is going to evolve. So that love is just going to generate points, that's not too much of a problem. We can deal with all of that. He's actually just on the field right now, that is interesting. Uh, so now we're going to go with the Dandelion combo that I just talked about before. So if you play Dandelion on the field where you have two archers, you actually give yourself an immediate boost. Um, because you get those 8 points, those 8 provisions that Dandelion is worth, just on the first turn. And he has such a high point ceiling, you'll see that in a minute. But he has an amazingly high point ceiling, which is just awesome. Uh, remember we also have a second Revenant in our hand if we need to just get that train going again. Uh, we couldn't kill anything up to one, uh, 1 power on the other side of the field, so we just keep those charges on the Archer to go up next and there we go there we have Werecat that is actually a pretty good Werecat because he now takes out the armor on both of the archers uh, losing us those charges but I need to be careful that I don't yeah I need to use the rest of the charges um, on something that I can just take out um, so now we're gonna use those charges on the Akimara just to take it out of commission and then use the Kedwani Revenant on that Akimara. We get another one. There we go. I didn't use the boost from uh, Visigota, that might have been a problem here. I kind of threw away those points. Yeah, okay. There goes Visigota, that was completely my misplay, even though it would have only saved me one point. Um, yeah. That was kind of a misplay, but here we go. We still have Siege, so this is far from over. Um, so let's just play Siege now. We know Karelti Heatwave is gone, so that's not a problem at all. So let's just play uh, Siege. We get that trebuchet and that gets the ball rolling. There we go. And this is what uh, catches most pe people by surprise, because nobody expects Siege in a mobilization deck anymore, because mobilization changed to just include the soldier category, so you're forced to spawn a copy of a soldier. Um, and that's exactly what we're going for right now, so... Um, we still have that one larva on the back row. I'm gonna be spawning more and more trebuchet, so I wanna just keep that going as well. It's a bit sad because of the revenants that are not going to go further anymore. Um, but yeah, let's just spawn reinforcements. I could go for the archer, but then I lose the final part of siege and I don't want to lose that. So let's just get another uh, trebuchet on there that's just going to keep killing the uh, larva. And you can see the point potential in this deck. Uh, just the, the, the huge amount of damage pings going around is just almost unstoppable and we get the um okay so the ranged movement so that's gonna move i would assume that you're gonna move the the archer why that why the hell would you move the archer that is really suspicious um Okay, I'm kind of confused now, but um, I'm pretty sure we still have, yeah, we have uh, one final trebuchet in the graveyard. So let's play that third one over here. So that exact, that's exactly why I kept that larva alive. We just keep getting that target and then we put bombardment on the field for about nine damage. And we get our next one power unit over here and get another one over here. 
Uh, might as well put the tree damage on there before I lose it. And there goes the larva. And there we have Goliath. So that's 10 points. But no Thrive anymore on the field. So that's too bad for them. Um, so let's play that Older Kedweni Revenant. Um, right over here. Because I'm going to use my own to just take out Adalia and get two points on top of that. So that just keeps going. A lot of revenants. That's what exactly what we wanted to see. Sad about the um, the misfiring of the archers. The uh, our opponent was really smart in using Werecat to just remove that armor. And at the moment, I don't have ways to reapplying armor. There's ways you can actually do that, but I try to avoid all that. Ooh, that was that was also definitely a misplay, I think. Because now I can just use that tiny little thing over here to grab uh, that one and I have that one boiling oil in our deck left to just do this um, and just grab five points extra and um, doesn't really matter where I put that last point of damage but I don't think our opponents will be able to take out um, what is 36 points ahead there we go so even though our main um, engine loop was completely wrecked because of uh, Dandelion, well not Dandelion, Dandelion was still there, but we lost the armor on the arches, which me meant that they weren't generating charges anymore, and of course Fizogota got nuked immediately, and that was kind of my mistake. But even with that, we managed to uh, quite easily win. So especially against monsters, um, it's important that you don't get uh, overwhelmed in the first round, don't go too far, because they just want to freak you out and try to bully you outside of uh, to, to just waste your good cards don't do that um, siege can be handy to take those first uh, that first round if you really need to but other than that you just need to be careful that you don't get bullied into a short final round because that's the weakness of this deck so when with that done i want to just take one more look at the deck um Aside from what I just told you about being careful not to get bullied into a short round, um, you need to be careful that, one, uh, there's a lot of situations where in this deck you need to keep in mind which cards you need. So for example, for Siege, you need two more Siege engines. For Queen Adalia, you need a Bronze card in your hand. Uh, same for reinforcements, you need a bronze unit on your side of the field to be able to copy it. There's a few caveats there that can brick a few cards. Um, but other than that, um, if you keep that in mind, you shouldn't be too problematic. Mobilization itself also has that requirement, but you can just uh, play mobilization immediately after you playing either a revenant or an archer, as I just did in that past uh, match. Um, I think the biggest weakness to this deck is, as you saw, if there's a lot of removal against you that keeps consistently taking out your archers, your revenants constantly, then you're in trouble. But again, the, a lot of decks are in trouble if you uh, if you face something like that. And they usually don't have a lot of points on their side if they want to do that. Other than that, just keep your engines going and this most, I mean, the win should be yours because this is a very, very powerful deck. Even though it's not a classic uh, meta deck, um, I keep winning with this. So, and it's really, really fun to play. So hopefully you guys feel the same. Let me know in the comment section what you think of it. If you have ways to improve it, like for example, as I said, I don't have any ways to reapply armor, but you can easily just swap out one of the Kedweni Knights over here. Might as well actually do that for uh, the version on the Play Gwent website and put the Rat of its Royal Guards in there that can actually give you two army if uh, he is inspired. So you can just reapply it like that. Siege Ladder, again, I've included that, but it's something that you can also remove if you want to. But it's really handy in case, uh, like our, our opponent actually did move one of the archers from the back row to, uh, from the range row to the melee row. You can just put it back there if you want to. Um, but other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think of it. And uh, if you're aching for more, there's plenty more deck guides on the website and uh, more on the Team Elder Blood website. If you're looking for that, check out their snapshot as well. There's uh, videos from me included in that. There's videos of our new content creator, GG Chucho, in uh, there as well. Um, so we're really, really growing and that's always nice to see. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye.